Hello YouTube, how is everyone doing? It's Professional here. So today I got another top 5 video for you guys and this one's on GTA Vice City Stories. So as you guys might remember, I completed Vice City Stories recently. I'm doing Vice City right now. I'm working on a few lore videos on Vice City and Vice City Stories and GTA 4. But I also wanted to put out this video, which is top 5 worst missions in Vice City Stories. Now this video is going to be focusing on really bad missions. We're not focusing on just hard missions because just because a mission is hard doesn't mean it's a bad Bad mission. We're instead focusing on missions that are just poorly designed. Missions that peop when people get to them, they're like, oh no, not this mission. So I hope you guys enjoy this one. Top 5 worst missions in GTA Vice City Stories. Starting off at number 5, we have Money for Nothing. Hey Vic! Hey. Yo bro, so, what's up? Vic, you want to hear about a little plan that is going to make us three very rich? Very rich. Mm -hmm. So what's the risk? Well, let me put it like this. You will not be handling any drugs. All I need you to do is keep the cops busy while Lance and I steal some merch off the scum who brought it into this country. The drugs are already here, so we ain't drug trafficking. Exactly. That's still drug trafficking. You're just a decoy. All you gotta do is make the police think you're carrying. They can't arrest you for that. No, but they can shoot me. Oh. Don't be ridiculous. Yeah, come on, man. Come on. Vic, you'll be fine. Rich? And fine. All right, let's do it. Yeah, let's pop. So even though Vice City Stories, the story is great and there's a lot of fun missions, there are some bad missions like this one. So starting off here with this mission, Money for Nothing, basically what this mission is, as you guys saw from that cutscene, is this is the part where Vic first meets Forbes, Lance's suspicious friend. And so basically what Forbes tells Vic is that they, Lance and him are going to go and steal some big cocaine shipment. And all Vic basically has to do in that time is say that he has to distract some cops. So Vic basically has to drive across town, get a van, and then drive all the way down to the docks. The only good thing that I'll say about this mission is that you actually see some cops actually looking at you on a rooftop as you're actually sw swapping vans right before um, Vic becomes a decoy. This is actually a cool cutscene because it does show you that Forbes is an undercover um, cop, so it does add a little bit to that story. However, though, the mission design itself, it's pretty bad because basically what you're doing is you're going to be driving like this van for around three to four minutes for three-star one in level, and so you got to constantly watch out for cops smashing in you. It's just a boring um, mission. It's very similar to that mission in GTA 3 for Donald Love, where basically you drive around in a van, and you basically use that van as a distraction to avoid cops, so that basically Donald Love can escape in GTA 3, and in Vice City Stories, um, Lance and um, Forbes can escape. It's just boring. You're just driving around this van, there's really nothing to do, and the cops are constantly smashing into you. So you gotta do that for a few minutes, and if you fail at any point, you gotta restart the whole mission, and you gotta do this all over again, basically avoiding these cops. And and the worst part about it is that even when the decoy is finally complete, you still gotta lose the wanted level in order to finally finish the mission. Next at number four, we have unfriendly competition. Full of suffering, then you die. See? I knew we were of one mind, you and I. Which is why I know you will feel this slight as much as me. Here we go. Some crooks have shown their contempt for us by using our home as an entryway for drugs into this fine nation. Like you. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Plagiarism. It is an insult. I hope you're wise enough to see that if you let a man insult you, before long he will try to kill you. You must kill these degenerates. You'll find them near Ocean Beach. So as you guys see from this cutscene, this mission is an Armando Mendez mission. And basically, Mendez wants Vic to go and get rid of his competition. So Vic does take care of this drug dealer in Vice Point. He kills him pretty quickly. It's pretty easy. But then the hard part is actually when you go over to the hotel. When you go over to the hotel, and this is going to be kind of controversial because I know some people are going to say they love this mission. This mission, the premise of this mission, is kind of cool. And it's kind of funny. Vic confronts this drug dealer, and then all these girls just pull out AK-4 and try to kill him. It's funny at first, but the problem with this mission is that the NPCs with AK-47s will just spawn at such random locations. They'll spawn on your left side, they'll spawn on your right side, they'll spawn in front of you, they will spawn behind you. So if you're not very well prepared in this mission, you're gonna die a bunch of times. It's just a ridiculous amounts of spawns. They have to kill waves and waves of these enemies, and you're gonna take a lot of damage and lose a lot of health just because of the random spawns. But the thing is though, when you finally kill all the NPCs, you have to chase down the drug dealer. The drug dealer then gets onto an ATV, and when you finally kill a drug dealer, it's over. However, though, the drug dealer will throw grenades at you. Yes, they will throw grenades at you, which makes the mission 
even more terrible. So like I said, the premise of this mission is kind of cool, it is funny, but just the random NPC spawns, I just really don't like that. And on top of that, they make the mission even harder, but a drug dealer throwing grenades at you. Moving on to number three, we have the Colonel's Coke. I can't deal with this. Oh darling, please, I need your help. It's a friend of mine, Gonzalez. <laughs> He's got to move a shitload of coke. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. Now in this mission, Rennie wants Vic to go and help Gonzalez. The cutscene actually ends abruptly with Rennie, which I was wondering whether Rockstar actually had something more planned in this cutscene, because the way it ends, it just, it's like there was supposed to be more dialogue. But anyways, Vic goes and meets Gonzalez at the dock in downtown, and Gonzalez tells him this. Are you Gonzalez? Ah, you must be Victor. Hey, senor, I need to get my colonel's merchandise safely to Viceport. Your colonel? You're in the army? Not your army. Colonel Juan Garcia Cortez is my boss. I'll bear that in mind. Take my copter. My men will join you. So Gonzalez is basically moving a ton of cocaine that belongs to Colonel Juan Cortez, and he wants Vic to protect it. So Vic has to get into the helicopter here with two of Gonzalez's guys and protect Gonzalez. The problem with this mission, the reason that it's so bad, is that you kill more enemies in this mission than any other mission in the game. And I'm not joking on that. You kill more people than even in Last Stand, the final mission. The reason is, is because when you're in this helicopter, you have dozens and dozens and dozens of boats with all these machine guns and jet skis just going after the, um, Gonzalez's boat and even a helicopter and so basically you are just hovering over Gonzalez when he's supposed to be in this speedboat which is this boat that's supposed to go really fast but for some reason he's just going really really slow and you're constantly protecting him from enemies this actually reminds me of um the doomsday heist in GTA Online it reminds me in the protect you all paper mission where you're pretty much doing a similar thing where in that one he's in a little small helicopter and you're constantly protecting him from this helicopters coming in here you're protecting Gonzalez in a boat when he's constantly getting attacked by boats over and over and over again and the these enemies, I believe these are the sharks that are attacking him, they have more boats than the entire Vice City Police Department. That's how many boats they have, it's not an exaggeration. The one good thing I'll say about this mission is thankfully, Gonzalez's guys are accurate. They are accurate and they will blow up these boats pretty quickly. You do have a machine gun on the Sea Sparrow, however this machine gun is only really effective in first person. You're not really going to be able to hit jet skis, it's going to be too hard. You can hit boats and blow them up with, with it, but the problem is, you don't even want to use the machine gun. The reason you don't want to use the machine gun is because you'll be going into first person to get the best view, and when you're in first person, you can't see how damaged the helicopter is. And so the helicopter might be more damaged than you realize. What happens is the helicopter gets too damaged, you guessed it, it blows up and you fail the mission or you just fall out in the water. I mean, take a look at what happened to me here. Oh no. Oh great, what do I do now? Wonderful. Thankfully, Gonzalez was at the end there, and I passed the mission, but this mission, it's just so bad. It takes too long, it's a really long mission, and there's just so many enemies to blow up, and when you do finally finish the mission, your helicopter is either going to get blown up, or you're going to be smoking and really damaged. At number two, we have High Wire. Two of us, but only one of you. So Diego suggested we explain to the police that the cocaine was yours. Well, oh, oh, my, oh, yeah, that's very thoughtful of you. And unfortunately, I have this paperwork showing your involvement in the project. Unless we could resolve this little distraction. And how do you suggest we do that? You steal the cocaine back for us. It's uh, been impounded. Mm. You must steal it before they take it back to the police station. <laughs> Thank you, Vic. I do so enjoy our conversations. I find you very inspiring. Thanks. Here we go again. Have fun! So this is another Mendez cartel mission, so of course the Mendez brothers give you some of the worst missions in the game. No wonder these guys are antagonists. 
But anyways, the in this mission, basically what happens is Me Armando Mendez informs Vic that the police are onto them, and so basically what they did was they explained to the police that the cocaine was Vic Vance's, and so now Vic has to go to the lockup and get his cocaine back, and so Vic basically has to drive across the map, get into a Maverick helicopter with a big magnet, and then go on over to the police impound lot. Now the problem here is that the first crate is put in such a stupid position, I don't know if the people that were designing this mission even had any idea what they were doing but basically, some idiot put the, the crate right on the side of the building. Literally right on the side of the building. So when you're trying to pick it up, you actually have to scrape your helicopter and hit the side of the building when you're picking up the damn crate. Then what you do, you take the crate all the way over and drop it off here. After you're done with that, you find out that there's a second crate. When, there's a, when you go after the second crate, this one's on a truck. So now you fly on over and you go and pick up that crate. And then you deliver it. But is that is the mission over yet? No, the mission isn't over yet. They're going to torment you even more. So now what you have to do, that same guy that you were actually talking to earlier in the mission when you picked up the helicopter, he's being attacked by a bunch of bikers. And for some reason, the guy is now across the map. And so you got to fly the helicopter all the way across the map and you got to save him from the bikers. And the worst part about this is that he's constantly moving. And the area that he's driving in, there are so many street lamps and poles, so many buildings that you could hook your helicopter onto and you could blow it up. And there's actually a timeline limit on this so he's actually getting blown up he's getting slowly damaged and you guessed it if he dies the mission fails and you have to start all over again i mean look at this i'm just struggling to pick him up on my first attempt on this mission when i did it on the playthrough i got kind of lucky and i hooked him up pretty quickly but you're either gonna get really lucky and you're gonna hook him up real uh, really fast or you're gonna take really long or he's gonna die so it's just, it's such a nightmare. You got to finally pick him up. You got to hook him up and then you take him on the uh, roof of this parking garage. And that's pretty much it for the mission. Man, this mission made me want to kill the Mendez brothers right away. Before I reveal the number one worst mission in Vice City stories, I wanted to make a special mention here, which is the mission White Lies. If I want to take Coke, I will. If I want to give it away, I will. And I'm going to give it away. All of it. And you can't stop me! Lance! Don't be stupid! So in the mission White Lies, Vic yells at Lance. Lance gets really angry and starts dumping all their cocaine. Vic has to go and pick it up with a hovercraft. Now this mission, that you don't have to kill any enemies in it, but it's kind of a very boring mission. You just basically follow the helicopter and you pick up the coke. However though, there's kind of this one ramp on the hill here where it makes it seem like you're supposed to hit it, but if you actually do hit it, it will actually flip the hovercraft upside down. What? Oh my god. Oh my god, I failed that. I can't believe I literally failed that. I literally just... I flipped the hovercraft. Damn. Well, come on. Okay. Oh my god, I failed it a second time. You gotta be kidding me. This is getting stupid right now. Okay, I gotta be really careful on that angle when I come down, but that's just... Oh my god. I failed this mission two times, two times just doing that, and then I had to go around the side just to hit it. Special mention number two right here is we have um, Boomshine Blowout. Now, this is actually a really early mission in the game, and I actually kind of like this mission in a way, but also I just get really annoyed by the timer because it's such an early mission, it's very difficult for a lot of players. So basically, Phil's um, Boomshine is going to be blown up by the Cholos. And so Phil wants you to basically get into this forklift and save all the boomshine before it ignites. And so you have to go around the warehouse, pick up all the boomshine. But what happens is rubble actually falls down from the warehouse and that rubble will get in the way. So it'll actually limit the amount of routes that you can take out of the warehouse, which will actually take long. Wait too long, the boomshine blows up, you die, and the mission fails. And number one, the absolute worst mission in the game. Turn on, tune in, bug out. Lance, get over here and explain yourself. Shh. Stop acting like a child. Shh. Don't you shush me. Keep your voice down. No, you can barely tie your own shoelaces. You telling me how to behave? Will you shut up, you stupid gorilla? The place is bugged. The DA is on to us. Happy now. So basically what's going on here is the Vance brothers' businesses are being bugged by the DEA, the Drug Enforcement Administration. Fortunately, Lance has his own master plan on how to deal with this, and Lance basically tells Vic that he should go and blow up all of the police antennas. So he has to go to all the rooftops, and Lance does not help you at all on this mission, of course. So Vic has to go and pick up a rocket launcher. He goes on over to the first police station in Vice Point. He blows up the um, antenna on the, on the rooftop, two antennas actually, and you get 
a two-star wanted level. Now, at this point, you can actually take the helicopter that's on the police station roof. It'll make the mission a little easier, but the mission is still really difficult. Vic then, at that point, has to fly across the map, and mind you, there's also a timer during this mission, so the second that the evidence gets all the way, you fail the mission. He has to go on over to the little Havana police station, and now he has to blow up two more antennas right here. And you actually have to save these rocket launchers. You don't just save them for the antennas, but you have to save them for the police helicopters. Because if you don't blow up the police helicopters that spawn quickly enough, they will actually shoot down your helicopter or severely damage it when you're about to take off because the police helicopters are really accurate. So then after you blow up the antennas on the little Havana um, police station, at that point, you will have a three or four star one level. You fly on over all the way over to downtown and you, la you land on this rooftop. It makes the mission a little easier. If you try to land on the police station rooftop the mission is much harder there is actually SWAT team members with machine guns that hit you perfectly accurately on this rooftop so just basically use the rocket launcher blow up the other antennas at this point you will have another police helicopter spawn and if you don't actually shoot down this police hel helicopter in time it will actually damage or blow up your helicopter you get rid of this police helicopter and then what you have to do at this point you have to lose the one level you will have five stars Five stars of cops coming at you, and this is the old GTA games. This is the GTA games where when you had a lot of cops in this game, they, they would constantly keep smashing into you until you blow up. That's how the cops worked in the old GTA games. And so what you want to do with the helicopter is you have to get somewhere on the ground. The best thing to do is take the helicopter really high in the sky or take it over areas where there aren't roads and then land it somewhere safe and then try to get a vehicle. Because if you actually fly right over the roads, the police, how accurate they are, they will actually shoot down your helicopter. I mean, just look at what happened to me here on this attempt. And the police, they are so aggressive. They will just keep charging and charging you with just assault rifles and submachine guns and you can barely get away. I shot a bunch of them up. I tried again this car i couldn't get away they blew up the car i tried to run away i got gunned down so quickly i lost my helicopter like that fortunately though i do have a bit of a trick if you actually take the police helicopter and you actually land behind this business take make sure you take over this business before you actually um before you complete this uh, mission because this mission is right near the pay and spray and there should be a car spawned here i use the muscle car um because i had that business attached to it here um i believe that that is for the um uh, the prostitution business i believe that's what the muscle car is for but anyways i took the muscle car i drove in the pay and spray really quickly and i finished it but the mission gets even worse how does it get even worse when you have to lose the one level professional it gets worse because even when you lose the one level you only get $300 for this mission. $300! That's how much you get for that, for dealing with all that stress, going all the way across the map to three different police stations, dealing with a five-star one level, almost constantly getting blown up, dealing with cops constantly smashing into you. You get $300 for your troubles for that. Oh my god. This is one of the most stressful GTA missions I've ever played. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, drop a like. Let me know if you guys enjoyed it, and I'll have more videos like this coming up. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care, everyone.